Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. the trouble, Stumpy. I don't know, Bill. I guess I'm a little depressed. I can see that. Want to talk about it? It's crazy, I guess. I passed by Pete Granville's place on the way here, and it kind of got me down. Well, we haven't stopped in on Pete for a long time. Poor old feller. He's spent almost his whole life collecting them relics from the Civil War. He's become a real full-fledged authority. I know. A number of the younger fellas have been over to his place to see his collection and listen to him talk about it. They all say it's really something to see. I sometimes think the young uns got more sense than a lot of older folks. What do you mean, Stumpy? Poor old Pete's been trying to interest a lot of folks in the stuff he's collected. He's been writing to folks in museums and places like that for years. And no one is interested, huh? They're all just too busy to be bothered. Most of them never even answer his letters. You have to admire the way Pete Granville is stuck to his Civil War rally collecting. People have been laughing at him for a long time for the way he's had to live in that run-down place of his. Every cent he gets, he puts into some other thingamabob from the Civil War. What with all the time and energy he spent going after that stuff, he ain't even had a steady job for years. Just odds and ends, enough to get by on. Sometimes I wonder whether he really is getting by, old-timer. Well, I think what I saw today answers your question, Bill. Oh? Yep. There's a sign outside of Pete's place. Looks like he scribbled the thing himself. Well, what does the sign say? It says, uh, junk for sale. Junk? That's right. And what it looks like to me is that old Pete finally gave up on his collecting and is going to sell the whole mess for junk. Well, I can hardly believe it. Poor fellow must be in bad shape to do a thing like that. Imagine taking the work of a lifetime selling it for junk. Stumpy, I think you and I ought to pay Pete Granville a visit. Maybe there's more to this than meets the eye. Sit down, Bill Stumpy. <laughs> it's more than good to see you. Thanks, Pete. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. <sighs> well, I can tell by the silence that this is more than a social visit. What's on your mind? Well, Pete, uh, we were wondering about your sign out front. Oh, that. I happened to see it this morning on my way to the station. Uh, couldn't believe my eyes. Well, you can start believing him, Stumpy. Are you actually going to sell your collection of Civil War relics, Pete? Yep. Lock, stock, and barrel. I'm through. But, uh, well, uh, what made you decide to do it? Well, look at us, Stumpy. You and me are about the same age, ain't we? <laughs> if there was anybody but Bill here, I probably wouldn't admit it. But uh, I reckon we are, Pete. And look at the difference in us. You're happy, active. You, you got the respect of the whole town. You don't go without meals except in the rarest of times. But me, here I am. The only friends I got are the kids who come to see my Civil War things and to hear me talk about them. You sure do know the Civil War, Pete. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good that does me. 
Where can I use what I know? I used to have dreams of making my place into a fine historical museum. <laughs> I'd have took folks on a tour through the things I've collected and well, maybe even dressed in an old Civil War uniform. That sounds like a good idea. Sure, fine idea. That's what everybody said. But <laughs> there wasn't one person who thought it was a fine enough idea to put any money into it. Well, if I was to use my place, it'd need a whole lot of fixing up. You can see what kind of a shack I live in here. Uh, would it take a lot of money, Pete? Well, how much is a lot? You know, I talked to a lot of men who had plenty, and just as soon as I brought up the money, my good idea was thought to be just a scheme to get my place fixed up free. You just weren't believed, huh? That's right. Well, I guess nobody believes that there could be an old fellow like me who was interested enough in people learning more about history that he's willing to do anything about helping them. Well, I'm surprised that you'd get that kind of reaction from anyone in Naughty Pine, Pete. Everyone knows how you practically starved yourself and sacrificed just about everything for your collection. Well, you know, lots of folks seem to turn into a whole lot of different people when there's money in it, Bill. You know that. I suppose I do, Pete. Well, after trying for years to interest almost anybody in my collection, I'm through. This collection of flags and guns and other things has made just one whole long miserable life for me. It's turned me, it's turned me into just plain junk. And that's what I'm selling it for. Uh, what are you planning to do, Pete? Uh, I don't know for certain. If I can collect enough for this stuff, maybe I'll go up to Central City and see if there's a night watchman's job or something to be had. Then I'll, I'll just get me a small room and spend my life out and quiet. In Central City? Well, can't stay here, Bill. Everybody points and laughs at me as it is. No, I ain't going nowhere where everybody's heard of Pete Granville and his foolishness. Do you really think that all the years of collecting, all the sacrificing, all the relics you've collected, do you really believe it was all foolishness? Uh, what does it matter what I think? I'm through, that's it. And I don't want to hear any more about it. You see, well, I'm depressed, Bill. I sure do, old timer. Looks as though old Pete is serious about selling his collection of relics. There ought to be something we can do for him. I know exactly how you feel, old timer. But what could we do that he hasn't already tried? I know. Wait a minute. Hold it right there. Idea? Why didn't I think of this before? Think of what? Of course, Pete has tried everything. Do you know what folks think of him? He said so himself. They all think he's just an old crackpot. Don't take a think you think he says seriously. Now, maybe if uh, one of us, maybe if an I would go around to see some of the businessmen in town and talk to them about Pete's collection, they'd think more seriously about it. That's a possibility, Stumpy. I'll do her. Just can't sit back and let Pete throw away all them years of hard work. Well, something tells me that you'll have to work in a hurry. I have a feeling that he won't have any trouble at all talking a junk man into buying his whole collection. And soon. Good afternoon, Stumpy. Howdy, Mr. Fillmore. You, uh... Wanted to see me? That's right. You, uh, you look so serious. Usually when I see you, you have a new joke about banks. Uh, <laughs> nothing today. Well, as a matter of fact, I have come across another one, Mr. Fillmore. <laughs> I didn't think you'd show up here unprepared. Tell it to me. Well, uh, the picture shows this little man standing at the teller's window, uh, pointing a gun at the teller. Oh. And he's saying, uh, transfer all the money to my account. 
That's pretty good. I thought of trying that myself just to see if it'd work. <laughs> well, it wouldn't. <laughs> What would you do if you had all the money in this bank in your account, anyway? Well, the one thing I'd set about to do would be to get Pete Granville uh, going in a Civil War museum business. You'd what? <laughs> oh, you're kidding, of course. No, I'm not. Old Pete spent a good many years and a lot of energy collecting his relics. I think they ought to be made available for others to see. Mm. And you think the bank ought to finance this enterprise? I figure you're the logical place to ask. Stumpy, I pass right by his place every day. For the last couple of days, I've seen a sign outside his shack. It reads, junk for sale. Now, well, you can't seriously think that my bank would finance the displaying of a collection that even the owner calls junk. But... He's only given up because no one believes enough in Stumpy, you have a big heart. Everyone knows that. Now, I'm not surprised that you're making this appeal for your old friend. But uh, sometimes it takes more than compassion to make things happen. Why, I wouldn't have my bank a week if I went around financing everything that appeals to my sentiment. No, I'm sorry, Stumpy. I might just as well put it plainly. The bank is definitely not interested in throwing any money away in the direction of Pete Granville. Shh. We must maintain quiet in the library. You mean in me? Uh, no, Mr. Jenkins. Those girls over there. May I help you with anything? I'd like to talk with you about something, Miss Marion, if you have a few minutes. Certainly. Uh, let's go into my office. That way we won't disturb those who are trying to read. Uh, yeah. Won't take much of your time, ma'am. <laughs> you don't have to whisper in here, Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> now, what was it that you wanted to see me about? Well, uh, Miss Marion, to lay it on the line, I'd uh, like to get you in the library interested in a display room of Civil War relics. Well, we already do have a small display along with the books which are coming out in the subject. I know. Uh, that's what made me think you might be interested in seeing what Pete Granville had in his collection and then maybe putting together a real display. Has Mr. Granville tried to talk you into this? No, ma'am. I've seen his collection, and I've got this notion all by myself. Well, this notion, as you call it, is not a new one. Mr. Granville himself has written me two or three letters proposing exactly the same thing. And you haven't taken him up on it? Mr. Jenkins, I want to show you Mr. Granville's letters. I save them to use as illustrations when I teach an occasional class. Huh? Illustrations? Ah, uh, uh, here they are. Take a look at these letters, Mr. Jenkins. See? Barely readable. The words are misspelled. And such terrible grammar. Well, old Pete never had a whole lot of schooling. That's exactly the point, Mr. Jenkins. A man of his background and education trying to pass himself off as a, well, as an authority. Why, it's almost laughable. But Pete is an authority. Leastwise, on the Civil War, he is. He's read almost everything ever written and collected a lot of fine relics. Mr. Jenkins, are you an authority in the Civil War? Mm, no, ma'am. Then how do you know Mr. Granville is? Well, I, uh... It takes an authority to no one, Mr. Jenkins. If the look of Mr. Granville's letters, and for that matter, the shack he lives in, is any indication of his scholarship, I'd say that he's nothing more than an old man who likes to tell stories to children, and that he's told these stories so long that he's begun to believe them himself. And as to the library having anything to do with a man like that, well, I, I hardly need to tell you, Mr. Jenkins, that we're not in the least interested. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your coming, Mr. Brooks. Uh, it's nice of the colonel to go out on a limb for me and talk you in coming. 
You're convinced that this gentleman's collection of Civil War relics has merit? Yes, sir. I've seen it. There's all the usual stuff. Guns, lanterns, even an old tent. And he's got lots of documents. Papers, maps, a few diaries. Well, the Central City Museum is always interested in really good relics. That's why I came. We get many offers of nothing more than junk throughout the course of a year. I hope this turns out to be something of value to our collection. Well, you can see for yourself soon. Uh, there's old Pete's place up ahead. I don't see it. Right up there. Surely you don't mean that tumble-down shack. Well, Pete has spent all of his time, energy, and money on his relics, uh, Mr. Brooks. Uh, hope you won't let the looks of the place influence what you see inside. I don't know how I could help it, but I came all this distance. I might just as well go through with it. What's this? Uh oh Junk for sale. Surely this does not refer to this fine collection I've come from Central City to see. I, I sure wish uh, Pete had these things in fine display cases and the like. Uh, I'm afraid his home might make them look more like they ain't of uh, much value. What, you, Stumpy? Oh, howdy, Pete. Uh, got a visitor for you. Oh, that's so. Who is he? Uh, this here is uh, Mr. Brooks from the Central City Museum. Uh, you want to see your Civil War collection? Oh, he does? Uh, yes. That's what I came for. <clears throat> well, let's get to it. Uh, polish these up, huh? That's right. Yeah, don't make him worth any more in my mind. I didn't polish him for you. I thought at one time I might display him for folks to look at. <laughs> They'll get plenty of displaying over at my junkyard. I got kids running through there all day looking through the stuff. All I can do to keep them from swiping everything in sight. Them boxes here you got maps and charts and letters with plans for attacks and... Other points of strategy. All these five boxes? That's right. Hmm. I'd say they weighed about 20 pounds each. Uh, 100 pounds of waste paper and all this other stuff. Is this uh, all of it right here? That's right. Hmm. There's some very old pieces there. Real Civil War relics. Uh, junk. But historic. Ever hear of any new junk? Uh some of the stuff I clean out of people's attics makes this stuff look like last year. Uh, what do you think it's all worth? Uh, you had anybody else bid on this stuff? Bid? Uh, never mind. I'll give you $15 for the whole pile. F 15 and I'll tow it all away myself. But, well, I, I spent years. Most stuff accumulates for a long time. But... Fifteen. Uh, look, mister, uh, I ain't got all day to quibble with you about prices. How much do you want for the pile? Oh, I never really give it much thought. Okay, okay. Twenty dollars and that's it. And at that price, I'm running a big risk of losing money on the whole deal. Twenty dollars? My life's wages. I ain't going no higher than 20, so don't think all them faces you're making will get me. Oh, all right. $20. Good. I'll be back here with the truck tomorrow morning. That's when I'll give you the 20 bucks. Well, I got to be running along. Got a couple more places to call on. Boy, I never seen a guy so nutty about his own junk before. <laughs> I help you? Uh, you the guy that called about the junk? That's right. Well, let's take a look at it. Uh, right out here. Uh, 
Uh, this is the pile of it right here. Uh, that's not so much. <laughs> Maybe when you're used to seeing a lot of old paper and junk around, a pile like this doesn't seem like much. But to us, it's just too much to be bothered with. Hmm. I, uh... I might be able to do something with this whole thing. Uh, draw still work? And just barely. I'm afraid that filing cabinet has seen better days. Uh, maybe, maybe. Well, I'll give you five dollars for the whole pile. Five dollars? You don't like the price? Well, I don't know whether I like it or not. Well, uh, what's with people these days? Everybody thinks that their junk is worthless until I come around. And then suddenly... What they've been calling junk becomes uh, some kind of undiscovered treasure. Well, I don't mean to tell you your business, but... Uh... Oh, you wouldn't be the only one. I just come from a place where another old guy had a house full of old beat-up stuff. He seemed to think it was a real value. But he was still selling it for junk. That uh, wouldn't be Pete Granville's Civil War relics, would it? Yeah, I... I think the guy's name was Granville. Anyhow, he called that junk of his relics. The way I figure it, if a, if a guy's gonna toss out a lot of old stuff and he calls the junk man, he ought to be glad for anything he can get. After all, who's doing who the favor? You, uh, mind my asking what? You're paying old Pete for his collection? Well, he made all kinds of sad faces and things. I ended up offering him a lot more than the stuff was worth. I'm giving him $20. Twenty? Twenty dollars? For his life's work? Uh, what is this? You, you guys working together or something? That 20 bucks is a good, fair price. It's, it's even generous. Now, I don't want to hear no more about it. Now, do you want me to take this stuff off your hands, or don't you? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, I'll be around tomorrow morning with my truck. I'll pay you the 20. I mean the 5 then. I'm getting out of here. Next thing, I'll be giving money away or something. I can hardly believe it, Bill. $20. It's hardly enough to go to Central City. Poor old Pete must be feeling about as low as a man can. get to it. Wait, I thought... What's the matter? Nothing. Go ahead and take it all away. If uh, you feel so bad about losing all this stuff, uh, why don't you take a little walk? It'll take me about a half hour to load the truck. Uh, when you come back, I'll uh, give you the 20 bucks. Maybe I will. Yeah, sure. Uh, have a nice walk. You'll feel better. Well, that's it. Here's your 20 bucks. I don't know how you talked me out of it, but uh, here you are. You got everything? All I could find. Well, I better be getting along. I got a lot more junk to pick up today before... Uh, hey, uh, what's that car doing? Uh, look at him parking right there in front of my truck. Well, that looks like Stumpy in there. Oh! Hey, what's going on here? Hey, Pete, have you sold this fella your Civil War relics yet? Yep. I was all set to leave if you'll get that car out of my way. Uh, Pete, I got Mr. Brooks with me again. He just come in from Central City. He wants your stuff for the museum. 
<laughs> what? Well, that's right, Mr. Granville. I went back to Central City and did some research in this area. I think we could use a great many of the items you've collected. I knew it. I knew it. But well, I just sold them to this fella. Well, maybe he'll sell them back to you. What's your price? I'm uh, selling it today for a hundred dollars. $100. I figure after hearing what this museum fella said, it's worth at least that. Nope, no sale. Forget it. On your way. Oh, but he can't. What? But, uh, uh, I thought... Well, that, uh, you thought wrong. I hope you find some other way to get rid of the uh, stuff. But, uh, don't you want it for the museum? We did, but, well, I... Well, uh... I'll make you a special offer, seeing you come all the way from uh, Central City and all. Uh, uh, Fifty dollars for the whole thing. Forty? Oh, look, I got to make something on the deal. I loaded it. Okay, twenty-five. Sold. I didn't want to pay $100 if I could help. Hooray! At that price, you could unload the truck yourselves. There will be a truck from the museum here later in the day, Mr. Granville, to take your interesting collection back to Central City. However, there is one other matter. What's that? Well, I was very impressed as I was going through various research sources at how many facts you mentioned in passing the other day. And they were all true. You must have a wealth of knowledge about the Civil War and the various artifacts of the time. Uh, Pete here is an authority, Mr. Brooks. And so I supposed. I mentioned this to the director, and he agreed that it might be a good idea. What is it? Would you be at all interested in employment with the museum? I mean, as a guide through the Civil War displays. Uh, a guide? I know it wouldn't be quite like having your own museum, but... Why, why, it would be even better. Would I be interested? Well, if you'd spent your whole life looking for water and then then suddenly somebody showed you the ocean and, and asked you if you'd like to jump in, well, what would you say, Mr. Brooks? <laughs> Well, boys and girls, I don't have to tell you that Pete is as happy as he can be over in the Central City Museum. He sacrificed a lot for his happiness. A lot of people made fun of his belief in the rightness of what he was doing. And all those stories like Pete's don't always work out the way his did. There's one thing that you and I can be sure of. We have it on the authority of God's word the Bible. And that's this. The fellow or girl who spends his or her whole life following Christ, no matter how much sacrificing or being laughed at it may take, that fellow or girl will one day enter into eternity as a child of God, loved of Him, and into a life of never-ending pleasure. That'll be worth it all. Don't you agree? Well, see you next week for more adventure with Ranger Bill! Ranger Bill was produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago.